Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys really took it to the Vikings this go-around in their latest matchup, and an absolute devastation of that team at home, 40-3. to Now, I did expect the Cowboys to win this game knowing how they usually are. They get embarrassed, they come out the next week, and they beat the crap out of a team, but I did not expect it to be to the level that it was. The Dallas Cowboys defeated the Vikings so bad that in the middle of the third quarter, they actually cut the game to the Steelers and Bengals game because the game was that uncompetitive. Okay, you know how hard it is to switch a game off of the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, it's, it's really tough to do that. And I think that with a lot of us, we needed this game to really reassert ourselves and be like, all right, guys, you know, what? we're here, we're doing our thing. But... It's just one game. That doesn't mean that it's going to translate into Thanksgiving because we know historically the Dallas Cowboys don't do well on Thanksgiving over the last 10 years. But for an interesting information point, over the last seven years, the Dallas Cowboys, typically if they win the game on uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, they will win the Thanksgiving game. And if they lose the game before Thanksgiving, they typically lose Thanksgiving Day. So I think that that's important going into that because now you have some momentum going into the game. And look, it's not going to be easy. Now, New York is beat up. And we'll talk about more about New York in the next video. But we'll talk uh, more so about the Vikings here because there were a lot of good points here and a lot of interesting things to note about this matchup. So let's start with the offensive side of the ball. So as I pull up the stats for the Vikings, the, the uh, Vikings really didn't do a whole lot offensively. You know, when you only have 180-plus yards of offense, you really can't do a whole lot. And, I mean, Kirk Cousins was 12 of 23. He had a pressure rate of 63%. For context... If you're trying to figure out, like, okay, well, what's a situation that I can look at to compare it to? In the Super Bowl, where the Chiefs really couldn't stop the Bucks' defense from getting to Patrick Mahomes, his pressure rate was 30%. So that's really a comparison right there for you. Um, yeah, Kirk Cousins was getting pressured all day. He couldn't do anything. He didn't throw a touchdown, didn't throw an interception. He nearly threw one to Diggs, which was, it was nearly one of the better interceptions that I would have seen from him um receiving yards TJ Hawkinson led the way with five receptions 34 yards and Dalvin Cook was contained 11 carries 72 yards so he was averaging a nice chunk of yardage but they really went away from the run because of the fact that Dallas was just scoring and scoring and scoring and then they couldn't get into a rhythm offensively but what really set the tone going to the Cowboys defense was Micah Parsons strip sacking Kirk Cousins to start the game off. That was just amazing. And I mean, considering the fact that the Vikings actually wanted to receive the ball to start off, really gave the Cowboys good, good stuff going into the second half of the game. Now, as for the Cowboys offense, Dak Prescott only had three incompletions, two touchdowns, 276. Tony Pollard led the way in receiving and rushing. 80-plus yards on the ground, 109 through the air, two touchdowns receiving. Tony Pollard was really your X-factor in this game. The wheel route was executed to perfection with not only what he did, but Dak Prescott getting the ball. Dak was fantastic in this game, and in fact, the entire team looked much better. You know, that's really good considering that you need to start getting into a rhythm. And I understand that you can look at the... Uh, other things that would, you know, be like, hey, you know, the Cowboys are probably going to win this game. Like, you know, in the sense of, hey, they got embarrassed. The Vikings won a game they really shouldn't. Usually that means that they lose the next. But there's still a lot to take away from this. Okay, Dallas dominated offensively. Defensively, they clamped down that Vikings offense, which typically would put up a decent amount of points. Now, kind of to go back to the point that I said earlier in the game, or before the game started, was that... The Vikings do a damn good job at getting turnovers through the air. They didn't get any of this game. They, they had no turnovers, and I think that's a testament to how well the Cowboys played. They took with what was given to them, and they didn't try to force things downfield, which I think is going to be the recipe moving forward. Now, 
One thing that I will say about the game that really irked me was the Brett Maher 60-yard field, field goal situation because there was a thing where basically he kicks a long field goal and then we're like, oh, oh, he hit it. <laughs> like, oh, that's crazy. And then they called it back because they wanted to review Lamb's touchdown or the, you know, when him he caught on the sidelines. And I was like, well, why are you doing that? You know, like, it, it just felt like the NFL was trying to screw you for a second. Then he kicks it even better the next time, and it's just like, <laughs> like, what is going on? Brett Maher is having a fantastic season. I got to give a huge shout-out to him. Uh, you know, he's just been killing it, man, and, and that's just awesome to see. Now, again, we'll see if he can continue it, but he's been doing really damn good this season. As for any other defensive stuff, uh, seven sacks... Seven sacks. The Cowboys now pretty much lap the field when it comes to leading the league in sacks, number one. But number two, they are much better uh, on pace than last year because last year they didn't have as many sacks and they had a little bit more turnovers. Now they have just, I think, three or four less turnovers from last year, but they have, I think, 12 or 13 plus more sacks. They are on the pace to not only, I believe, not only break the team record, for most sacks in a season, which was back in 2008. But I think they're on pace to beat the NFL record. In fact, there was a stat that came out that showed in through 10 games, the Cowboys actually uh, have the most sacks from any team in the last 20 years. That is impressive. And they're now the number one defense in scoring. Like letting up score. Like that is unbelievable. Now that the Cowboys' offense has started to get better, they've been averaging 33 points a game since Dak Prescott has come back. The Cowboys' defense has been starting to kind of get itself back into a groove after the anomaly. Now, we'll see if it was an anomaly in Green Bay because we know how Green Bay can be. Can they beat the Giants? And again, don't get too far into that because I want to save a video for that because of that game. But I would say for this game... The game balls, if you were going to give out game balls to anybody, I would probably say Tony Pollard. I mean, he did his thing. I would say Micah Parsons as well because he set the tone and he was really getting to the to to the backfield. Oh, my goodness. it was There was a lot going on. And I would say to Brett Maher too. I mean, he basically allowed the Cowboys to retain and keep that momentum going into the uh, second half of the game. That, that's huge, man. I mean, like, this, that kind of really told me that, okay, the Cowboys are really meaning business here. Like, the game was managed perfectly. I mean, I can't really say anything bad. I mean, you know, Kellen Moore did his thing. Mike McCarthy and Dan, like, everybody did their thing. You know, it was managed well from start to finish. The Cowboys scored in every single quarter. And,. To put things into a better perspective, the Vikings only scored three points the whole game. They put up those three points in the first quarter, and I believe it was uh, we were tied three to three, and the Cowboys scored thirty-seven unanswered points, which is all you can ask for. And like even when you put the backups in, they did their thing. So there's that. I think that the Cowboys really got something going here, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna wait until the New York game to say what I'm going or what I've been saying in. Uh, the back channels because there's a feeling about this Cowboys team that I haven't felt about any other NFC team thus far. But I think they're gonna they gotta prove that to me though. I, I don't believe that until I see it. And I think that you having three straight home games, you need to get yourself right because you gotta get something into gear. And if you can beat this Giants team upcoming, you'll be in a good position. So. I think that pretty much does it, guys. The Cowboys really did their thing, and I'm not really complaining as of right now. However, I want to see more. You're 7-3. and three. Congratulations. But I want to see this team continue to you know, to do these types of performances. It doesn't have to be like this every single time because I know that that might not happen every single time. But God damn it. I want to see this team really put things into high gear when they need to. Play pissed off every single damn week. I don't care. Don't just do it for one week, and then we're going to have a letdown on Thursday. So, all righty, guys. With that's, that's it. You know, we'll see how things go. And, um, yeah, we'll get to you with the Thanksgiving game preview sometime later today or tomorrow when you see this video. All righty, guys. Have a good one. Goodbye.